Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. So we're reading the Sealed Nectar, and it's been great so far. Learning a lot. We learn just so many different of the elements of stratagem, and about the Quraysh, the Jews, the tribe of Gaftan, and a person named Nuaym bin Masud. All right, so let's begin. He told them that the Jews maintained regular correspondence with the Muslims to the effect that Quraysh hostages be sent to the camp of the Muslims with full Jewish allegiance paid to them as already agreed upon. Nuaym then encouraged the Quraysh not to send hostages to the Jews. As a third task, wait, so the Jews accepted hostages as well? That's interesting. As the third task, he did the same with people of Gatafan. On Saturday night, Shawal 5 AH, both the Quraysh and the Gadafan dispatched messages to the Jews pressing them to go into war against Muhammad, peace be with him. The Jews sent back messages that they would not fight on Saturday. They added that they needed hostages from them to guarantee their steadiness, ah, so they did accept hostages too. Romans had hostages, Muslims, Jews, Christians, you know, it's pretty standard. This is very interesting, very educational. On receiving the replies, the Quraysh and the Gatafan came to believe Nuaym's warning. Therefore, they sent a message to the Jews, again inviting them to war and asking them to exclude that condition of hostages. Nuaym's scheme proved successful, and a state of distrust and suspicion among the disbelieving allies prevailed and reduced their morale to a considerable degree. So Nuaym's mission was successful then. Meanwhile, the Muslims were preoccupied, supplicating their Lord to protect their homes and provide security for their families. Allah's Messenger, peace be with him on his part, invoked Allah's wrath on the Confederates, supplicating, O Allah, you are quick in account. You are the sender of the book. We beg you to defeat the Confederates. Allah the Glorious and Exalted responded to the call of the Muslims coupled with the difference and disagreement that found their way into the hearts of the disbelievers. Forces of nature, wind, rain, and cold wearied them. Tents were blown down, cooking vessels and other equipment overthrown. Okay, so the elements then are coming into play. That very cold night, Allah's Messenger, peace be with him, dispatched Hudafa bin al-Yaman to hunt around for news about the enemy. He found out that they were preparing to leave frustrated for their inability to achieve their target. Allah fulfilled his promise, spared the Muslims fighting a frightening army, supported his servant Muhammad, peace be with him, and inflicted a heavy blow on the Confederates. Okay, so Confederates having their camp, you know, blown apart, having, you know, just very discouraging weather, you know, when it's chilly and a bit nippy out. People don't really want to fight as hard if they're not accustomed to fighting in such weather. Wow, okay. The Battle of Trench took place in the fifth year of Al Hijra. The siege of Medina started in Shawal and ended in Duhul Qada, i.e., it lasted for over a month. It was, in fact, a battle of nerves rather than of losses. Battle of nerves. Who can hold their patience and who can get maybe baited out in a certain situation? No bitter fighting was recorded. Nevertheless, it was one of the most decisive battles in the early history of Islam and proved beyond a shadow of doubt that no forces, however huge, could ever exterminate the budding Islamic power growing steadily in Medina. When Allah obliged the Confederates to evacuate, his messenger, peace be upon him, was in a position to confidently declare, here goes a good quote, from now we engage them, they do not engage us, we will mobilize to them. Okay, so definitely putting them in their place, essentially. Really growing the energy and the force from Medina. Okay, now we're in a new section, says, invading Banu Kurada. Right, it's exciting. 
On the very day, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came back to Medina after the battle. While he was washing in Umm Salama's house, Jibreel visited him asking... Okay, Umm Salama's house. Jibril visited him asking that he should unsheathe his sword and head for the locality of the treacherous Banu Kurida and fight them. Jibril told him that he, with a procession of angels would go ahead to shake their forts and cast fear in their hearts. That's an interesting assertion. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, immediately summoned the prayer caller, no, the prayer caller, and ordered him to announce that every listener should offer the Asr prayer at Banu Kureda. He appointed Ibn Umm Maktoum to administer Medina and entrust the banner of war to Ali bin Abi Talib. Okay, the banner of war is given to him. Who marched towards the appointed target and came close enough to hear the Jews abusing Allah's messenger, peace be with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, set out at the head of 3,000 infantry. That's a decent force. 3,000, that's not bad. And 30 horsemen of Ansar, helpers, and Muhajirin, immigrants, on their way to encounter the enemy. The Asr prayer was due. Some Muslims refused to observe it until they defeated the enemy, while others performed it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, objected to neither. When they reached the locality of Banu Kureda, they laid siege to their forts. Seeing this terrible situation they were in, the chief of the Jews, Ka'ab bin Asad, that's the, that's the chief, offered them three alternatives. Okay, look at that. Okay, let's see. To embrace Islam and consequently their life, wealth, women and children will be in full security and reminded them that such behavior would not be in opposition to what they had read in their books about the authenticity of Muhammad's prophethood. I see. So they're getting into a discussion like, hey, I'm the messenger that's been uh, ordained, and I'm the one. And they're like, maybe, hmm. To kill the children and women, and then challenge the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his followers to the sword to either kill the Muslims, or be killed, or, as a third possibility, to take Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his people by surprise on Saturday, a day they understood they were to participate in no fighting. See, that's what's tricky is when one side says that they're not going to fight and then they actually do end up fighting on that day. It's pretty shady. None of those alternatives appealed to them. So their chief, angrily and indignantly, turned to them saying, You people have never been decisive in decision making since you were born. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's horrible. <laughs> the dark future already visible, they made contacts with some Muslims who had maintained good relations with them in order to learn about their faith and know their fate in light of the current circumstances. They requested that Abu Lubaba, Abu Lubaba be dispatched to them for advice. On his arrival, the men began requesting favor, women and children crying desperately. In answer to their demand for advice, he pointed to his throat, saying it was homicide awaiting them. Oh, pointed to his throat? Like, like that kind? Or just like, ugh. When then, no, he then immediately realized that he had betrayed the Prophet's trust. Uh-oh. So he headed directly for the mosque in Medina, tied himself to a wooden tall pole, swearing that no one would untie him except Allah's messenger. That's, that's, whoa and added that he would never enter the locality of Banu Kurida in recompense for the deadly mistake he made. Hmm. Oh, like he tipped him off when he pointed to his throat? When the messenger peace be upon him was informed of this incident, he said, I would have begged Allah to forgive him if he had asked me, but since he tied himself out of his own free will, then it is Allah who will turn to him in forgiveness. That's a weird thing, tie yourself to a pole and then sit around waiting for someone to free you. That's strange. Abu Lubaba. <laughs> you never been decisive in your decision making since you were born. That's funny. Ka'ab bin Asad. Invading Banu Kurina. The banner is entrusted to Ali bin Abi Talib. Appointed 
Ibn Um Maktoum to administer stuff in Medina. Battle of the Trench. Nuim's scheme. Hostages. Informative as always. I really like this book. It's petite, you can bring it anywhere. But man, have we learned a lot. It's fantastic. Fantastic!